Hello again, it's Valerie Holdren with Soap Underground. Um, today I am going to be doing a hot process cook. Um, I've been awaiting with bated breath the arrival of dandelions and we had a really warm spell, oh, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago and dandelions are just popping up all over the place. So, day before yesterday, I took a big bag, and, and don't worry, I left plenty for the bees, um, and I picked quite a few, um, and I brought them in, washed them, um, dried them overnight, and then yesterday, all day, I did a slow um, hot water bath, um, I didn't even have it simmering. I just got my water to about 120 degrees and left my dandelions in my olive oil jar for probably about eight hours. Um, and then last, I took it out, let it cool, and then last night I strained it through cheesecloth. And I'll post some pictures um, at the end of the video of the process um, that I did. But... I used all of it in my recipe that I'm cooking, and I have this much left, but isn't that just the prettiest color? Um, I was very happy with it, and um, I think at the end of the cook, this is what I'm going to go ahead and super fat with, um, just about 1% more because my recipe is super fatted already at 7%. But anyway, one thing or a couple of things that um, I, I'll tell you about, when you do pick your dandelions, um, it is best to wait until it's sunny, um, all the dew is off, because that's when the flower um, opens wide. Um, and I just pick, some of them I pick the stem, some of them just the head. It depends on how easily they come up. Um, don't pick where your animals have trod. Um, don't pick by a roadside or if you have sprayed with chemicals. Some people feel that these are just a, a weed uh, and they're a nuisance and they want to spray them and kill them. So if you suspect that they've been sprayed or know they have, don't pick those. Um, those are just some little pointers that I've learned. This will be my third season harvesting dandelions. And I did make, like I said, I strained it and I made about uh, 30 ounces, I guess, of um, dandelion oil. My um, lye solution today is going to be dandelion root tea, which um, I had tea bags for that. And um, I got this really pretty deep, um, color. So I'm not going to be coloring this soap. I'm going to leave it um, and just see what I get. I am going to do, I'm going to attempt to do that ribbon swirl again. So I have just enough annatto powder here to color a little of my batter so that um, I can run it across the top of the soap and then make the little swirl on top of the soap. That's the only color that I'm going to be doing today. Um, I was trying to think if there was anything else that was spectacular about this soap, but I almost did it cold process and I thought, you know what? This just seems like an earthy soap, so I'm gonna cook it. And um, I've been, like I said, anxiously awaiting to make this soap. Um, so as soon as my oils are heating um, and everything is ready to go, um, I have my additives over on, a, an, on the stove in a hot water skillet. I'm going to be adding three tablespoons of honey and three tablespoons of apple cider vinegar because this is um, a three-pound batch. So that's one tablespoon per pound of um, soap. I'm adding sodium lactate 
And I don't have any yogurt because I haven't been making as much hot process lately. I don't want to waste the yogurt and it just went bad. So I'm gonna be adding um, some coconut milk at the end, which I um, deducted from my lye amount. I'm gonna add it warm, it's keeping warm on the stove. And I'm going to add a couple of um, tablespoons of heavy cream. I did that the last time when I didn't have any yogurt and it worked out beautifully. Um, the soap is so creamy. So, and because I'm not gonna be doing any swirl, um, I don't really need it to be fluid per se, uh, just manageable. And I think it will be because it's, as I said, it's not gonna have any color except what little bit I'm gonna do on top. So as soon as my um, oils get heated, we'll get back and get started. Okay, we're ready to begin. Um, my oils right now are at about 150. Um, my lye solution is, uh, it was about 180. Um, very dark. <laughs> um, but as I said, I'm not going to be adding any color. So um, I'm going to go ahead and mix these up. But I'm just thrilled with the color, this cheery yellow color from the dandelion oil. And I used only dandelion olive oil. That was, I didn't use um, any plain olive oil, just what I had infused. Uh, I also used... 5% castor, 20% um, coconut but coconut oil, 10% cocoa butter, and I think 20% shea. I don't have the recipe up here, so I'm just guessing, but um, I'm going to go ahead and get started. In here, I have my um, kale and clay. I had two tablespoons and two tablespoons of colloidal oats. And in here, I had um, mulberry silk dissolved. So we are ready to begin. to about a medium thick trace. quite a bit of air bubbles, which isn't quite as important in hot process, bringing it to trace until you stop pouring it and then you don't want air bubbles. But I have a smaller one that I use when I'm doing cold process. <laughs> I 
haven't decided if I'm scenting it yet. I do have um, a little blend over there of essential oil and um, I have a lemon fivefold and a little bit of sweet grass fragrance. But I'm going to see how it smells. It smelled wonderful before I added the lye. Um, I guess it was a combination of the dandelion infusion and um, cocoa butter. So we'll see. There. And if we get a lot of separation, I can always come back and um, stick blend it some more. So what I'm going to do is cover this back up. And when it starts to um, rise up and get to the next step, we'll come back. It's been about five minutes since I covered it back up. And here you can see on the sides how it's starting to um, fold over towards the middle. Um, when I first started learning to make hot process soap, one of the soap makers referred to this as, to think of it as um, a wave crashing onto the shore. Um, and that's what this does remind you of. It's like a, a wave that's starting to form. And um, so this is gonna be a not a really fast cook, but not a slow cook either. Um, pretty normal is what I would call it. Um, and probably when I stir it down, um, we'll have what hot process soap makers refer to as the applesauce stage. And again, I can't stress enough, applesauce stage and mashed potato stage and Vaseline stage, they are not um, technical textbook terms. Um, it, is, it is just an idea or an image that we can form in our minds um, that it reminds me of applesauce, or it reminds me of mashed potatoes, or it reminds me of translucent Vaseline. Those are just terms that we give or we use so that when a soap maker is new, they can think, okay, well, she said that it might start to look like applesauce or it might start to look like mashed potatoes. And when it looks like Vaseline, that means we're done. So, some people really get upset when we start talking about phases or stages. And if you don't want to use them, then by all means, don't. But they really helped me to form images in my mind and to, to relieve myself in that, um, knowing that I hadn't messed up and it was perfectly normal for it to resemble those things. So, um, as you can see, it's starting to work its way on over a little more. So in just a few minutes, we'll be stirring and um, 
we'll come back. Okay, we're getting a pretty good fold over. So I'm just going to stir this down and my crock pot is on low. I think, I don't think I told you, but instead of 38% water, uh, because I didn't want to do really any designing other than just on the top, I um, only used 35% water in this recipe instead of 38. So, that's just so pretty. It reminds me of porridge. Um, so, and my temperature is at 200. And I don't think it's going to take this one very long to, to finish out. So that does have a little apple saucy look. See that? Okay. Give it a few more minutes. Well, it's been 15 minutes total cooking time. And because I'm not a very patient person, and this is separating quite a bit, I'm going to go ahead and use my stick blender to finish it off. I turned my crock pot off, so um, because the batter is the soap is um, it's right at 193, so it's plenty warm. It's actually 197. So let's just see what happens. And I just go all the way around the pot making um, little small bursts of power. And I do anticipate it to try and volcano on me. But I don't always have the arm strength to whip it back into shape with my whisk because it can take a while if it has heavy separation. see we're getting into um, what looks like mashed potatoes and the next will be hopefully turn the translucent Vaseline and I'm going to stop with the stick blending and just finish it off like this Sometimes, if it's been a while since I've done hot process, and it has been about three weeks or a month, you know, you really have to, or I do, have to stop and concentrate on what I'm doing and what I'm saying. I kind of feel like a fish out of water sometimes when I haven't done it for a while, thinking that I have forgotten something. But this is coming along just fine, and it's going to transition over into Vaseline any minute. It already has some Vaseline on it. And because of the water discount, it's going to be a thick Vaseline. But it's plenty hot, and I don't need the heat 
of the crock pot because the, the heating unit is keeping it plenty warm. So we are practically there. some up from the bottom to get the more accurate reading and we're at 193 so I'm going to spray it with hot water so that it'll stay off of my sides because I don't want those little hard pieces that gather around the sides that cook to end up in my finished soap clean spatula and get me a little bit on the end of it and I'm going to let it cool and then I'm going to stick it to my tongue and do the zap test to make sure that all the lye is cooked. So we'll be back in a minute. Okay, I did the zap test and it is completely neutral, tastes like soap. So I did decide to go ahead and add just maybe a couple of um, more tablespoons of the dandelion olive oil as extra super fat just because, just because extra super fat is a good thing and this dandelion olive oil is supposed to be really good for the skin. So I'm gonna mix that in. And now we're gonna start adding our additives that I have had over on the stove. So the next thing I'm gonna add is my coconut milk. Which was deducted from my lye solution. To add now. And I'm going to add it slowly because it will cook because this is so hot. The crop is really, really warm, so I don't want it sticking to my and burning and um, scalding and having little particles of burnt coconut milk in my soap because you can't get them out. But you can see how dark the batter stayed. It is a yellow and I'm really glad about that. I don't know, it'll be a little lighter once it's um, cool and cut. And I'm sorry in a way that I don't have any yogurt um, but I don't. So we're just going to make do with what we have. And as I said, when I used the heavy cream the last time, it was really nice. It, it added a, a really nice creaminess and helped to loosen things up a little. I am going to have to wait until this batter is down to, um, 175, probably 170 before I add my honey because it might cook as well, which might not be so bad in this soap because of, but I don't think I want it to smell like, oh, what is that? What is that? Uh, creme, is it creme brulee? Something like that. Okay, now I'm gonna get my milk. 
or I'm sorry, my heavy cream. And this is two tablespoons. Just get it incorporated really well. Arm really gets a workout with thick, thick Vaseline soap. <laughs> it says I'm at 164. I just find that really hard to believe, but. 158. All right, I'm going to go ahead and add my honey. And in here is my three tablespoons of honey, three tablespoons of apple cider vinegar, and one tablespoon of sodium lactate. And honey is so good for our skin, as is apple cider vinegar. See, that loosened it up pretty well. And I do smell a little bit of that dandelion infused oil coming through. Okay, I'm going to spray down my sides one more time. Let this sit for a few minutes and I'm gonna grab my mold and my fragrance. I am gonna fragrance add just a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna add my fragrance. Not adding a lot. I just want enough to have a little citrusy, earthy smell. And this smells delicious. I don't have enough room on camera to, because all I'm doing is adding, um, the, stirring in my fragrance. So I'm gonna put it in the mold, and then once I'm done, I'll bring, I'll, um, worry about the top. I don't know how this top's gonna work. I've never tried it, hot process. So I'm just scooping in the mold. I'm gonna stop in a minute and bang it down. And running the uh, spatula through it helps too with the air bubbles. At least it, I found that to be true. Sorry if I'm boring you, but there's really not a lot to say about what I'm doing. Seems to have more in the mold this time. Okay. What's left in there I'm gonna use as a sample bar.
here. Okay. Now, I spray down the top again. And what I did was took a little of the batter and added quite a bit of water to hopefully get it to thin enough to come out of this and make fine lines on top. This is where I put the Annetto powder. But I'm not sure it's gonna work, but we're gonna try. Okay. Oh, I don't think it's gonna work. I have visions of the top plopping off. Let's see. Just like that. Okay. I'll pause you, clean it up, and be back. Well, that was a mess. I tell you. <laughs> Sometimes I crack myself up at some of the crazy things I think I can do. That's twice I've tried to do that, uh, the hot process batter through one of the little, um, I call them cutter bottles, color bottles, but uh, the cake decorating bottles where you put the frosting and didn't work. The first time didn't work this time. It's just too thick. So what I had to do after I cleaned up my counter, um, I had to scrape a lot of it off that plopped onto the soap and then add it back. And then I just swirled it um, into the top for some color. And I'm kind of glad I did because as it turns out, um, the dandelion, the batter part itself isn't, um, isn't really that colorful. So... Anyway, just a lesson, but this is what it looks like. Um, so it's not anything fancy, which I didn't want, but um, I'm gonna walk you over here to my sink. Try not to make you sick as I, okay. And show you the bubbles. Um, that's, well, that's not working. Okay. Anyway, I will do a lather test in a little while. But um, thank you for watching, and I'll see you later. And I'm going to post pictures of the um, in infusion drying process of dandelions and infusing it. And... Um, how the oil looked before and how it looked after and um, a lather test. Thank you. Okay, here we are back for the lather test. Um, gonna get my hands good and wet and you can see the bubbles. Nice big bubbles. And then Mimi lather. It's thick and it's dense. There you go. Spring dandelion. Get yourself some dandelions and you won't be sorry.